So welcome back to Finland, uh, Alien Weapon replaying here in Numerok uh, late this evening. It's your second time in Finland, so uh, what kind of memories do you have from uh, from playing in Tuska? Um, I remember that was one of the highlight shows of the last tour we did here. Like, absolutely filled to the brim the crowd was, and they were, they were going hard. So, like, yeah, it was, um, it's a very, very awesome to come back. Yeah. Uh, how how has the uh, the past couple of years been for you? Like uh, you released your latest album uh, last fall, so uh, how was it when when you didn't know like is there going to be any touring? In well, nobody knew what's going to happen. It was risky, but we wanted to obviously like fulfill the promise we made to our fans. You know, we said we'd release this album by a certain time, and we pushed it back a little bit, but we didn't. We, we didn't want to put, push it back too much more because then, you know, people are waiting for ages. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess we kind of took a risk, but like, we're here now, you know. Yeah. We finally get to uh, sh show it off to the European audience, you know, some of the new stuff we're doing. So, yeah. Yeah, well, and I think it's it ended up being right at the perfect time for us to release music you know it's it's still close enough to us releasing the album that it feels like we're actually touring the album and it's not something that's already old yeah uh, as an outsider it seems like uh, a lot has happened to you uh, in, uh, in the previous year so how does it feel uh, feel for you has it been like a roller coaster the like let's say <laughs> past five years oh yeah definitely like it's <laughs> It's kind of been hard to gauge, you know, what's going to happen next. But uh, uh, to be honest, I think everyone's been feeling like that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely good to finally, you know, the world's settled down a bit now. We can finally get back out there. We can finally, you know, do, do what we love and, you know, show the fans in person what we're working on. Yeah. Well, and last time we were here as well, Tūranga, our new bass player, wasn't with us. So no, that's <laughs> that's been a whole nother thing, another change that we've gone through. Um, and thankfully, it's been smooth and two's stepped up. Yeah, stepped up to the... COVID was like, it meant that I could creep my way in slowly and it gave me time to warm up to the lifestyle because I was just a university student yeah. doing my own thing. Whereas if COVID hadn't happened, it would have been, do the audition, yeah, you got the job, or I get on a plane. And that would have been like, whoa, that would have been super crazy. Yeah. So that, that was the one, the one silver lining. Uh, how has it been jumping? This, uh, this uh, moving vehicle. Yeah, like pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Like this is, is not even remotely close to what I had planned in my life, <laughs> ha. Um, but when the opportunity came up to audition for the band, I was like, why not? Give it a shot. I mean, I went to school with the boys, so they weren't strangers. Um, and I was like, that's a once in a once in a lifetime opportunity, so we might as well give it a shot. And here we are. <laughs> Has it been as uh, as you thought it might be uh, with uh, with this uh, world touring band? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I mean, other than the COVID thing, so that has thrown in certain restrictions, certain rules, obviously the the uncertainty. But other than that, like assuming we're back to normal, it all seems pretty much how I expected it to be. Yeah, which is fun. Yeah, well, uh, you were probably hearing stories of us telling you about the previous tours that we'd done and expecting something pretty different. Uh, yeah. Uh, you've been doing this uh, since you were, well, basically children, so... Yeah. Uh, how has it been, like, uh, d doing this for such a long time and, and now it's uh, it's finally paying off? It's rewarding. It's, it's yeah, it's... I mean, I, I've always wanted to do this ever since I was a little kid, so... I guess it's like, it's kind of, I'm super glad that we're actually, you know, getting there, you know, we're getting to the point where we can do this as a living and not have to, like, have another job, because, like, I mean, we still, during COVID, had to have day jobs and stuff, but, like, we're nearly at the point where we can, you know, just do this full time, focus purely on music, and that's what I love doing. Yeah, so, that, yeah. that's been our main goal for a few years, and it looked, you know, the last time we were here, it looked like it might just be happening, but of course, everything that has happened in the last two years happened, and we were like, oh, we're back a couple of steps, but we're still moving forward with it, and it's looking pretty good at the moment as well, which is uh, awesome. How was it in the beginning uh, when, when people basically, most of us don't understand a thing you're singing, so uh, uh, do people start to, to realize uh, what uh, Alien Weaponry is all about? Yeah, I mean, I think 
I don't know about the first time, but definitely the second time we came to Europe, it was pretty mind blowing. Like when we play a show, like in Finland, for example, or Denmark, or like somewhere that doesn't even like really speak English predominantly, and they're, they're, they've learned the Maori lyrics. Yeah. It's, it's pretty mind blowing to see, you know, how far people go to like understand what you're talking about. Yeah. And I, I think it's good that people are, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Even when our, the people in our own country don't want to learn our language. Yeah. yeah, people on the other side of the world are like, yeah, we want to learn it, just so we know what you guys are singing about. Right, like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I understand uh, that uh, the percentage uh, of people who still speaks uh, Maori language uh, is uh, is really really small in in it's something like three percent. Yeah. Um, which yeah, for it being a native language of New Zealand is pretty yeah, disgraceful. Language of New Zealand yeah, as well. pretty disgraceful. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Uh, do you see Alien Weaponry as a, as a political band? Um, in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. Um, we have political subjects in some of our songs. Obviously, the stuff about you know uh, injustice by the New Zealand government in the past, you know, can be construed as political. But I don't think we necessarily want to put you all ourselves as a political band per se. I think we just write about whatever we're feeling strongly about at the time. And if it's political, then so be it. And if it's not, then so be it as well. Yeah. Uh, is it hard to find the the the, the line where where it becomes preachy when when you talk, talk about like uh, well your your history or the political subjects? Uh, I don't know. I feel like. Part of what makes us New Zealanders is like we, we were brought up to kind of not even go near that line. I don't know. It's um, I guess it's just a judgment that we have to make, um, and also it's other people's preference. I guess you know some people might find it preachy, um, and a lot of people don't. So really, I don't I, I don't know where that line is. But I mean, I, I'm just gonna do what I do. <laughs> yeah, as an outsider to the band, you know, two, two years ago, I would have more considered their, you know, it's more like storytelling. Yeah. Like they just happen to tell the correct stories of what happened. They're not like pushing it onto people. You know, you're not like saying, you know, you need to this or that. They just tell the story, and if people absorb that story and information, then they've absorbed it. But yeah, definitely wouldn't consider it like pushing and or preaching about certain things. Like yeah. Uh, of course, for us, uh, many of the stories are uh, brand new. But how is it for for the New Zealanders? Uh, like, are these the, the stories that everybody knows? Not really. It's, that's um, the sad thing. <laughs> in New Zealand, we're taught a very basic uh, history about one thing that happened in, in New Zealand called the Treaty of Waitangi, and even they don't really delve into it very deep, and they hardly delve into any of the injustices of that story, even. Um, but there's, there's hundreds upon hundreds upon thousands of stories that um, I'd say like 99% of Kiwis have no idea about. Straight up. And I guess, yeah, a lot of our um, songs, especially the ones in Māori, are kind of uh, bringing light to some of that. So apparently you're not running out of stories uh, in the lyrics uh, in the near future. <laughs> no, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it. it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> so many, so many more we could sing about. Well, and um, something, something good with Tūranga having joined the band as well is because he doesn't have the same Māori family as us. You know, his his come family from come tribe. from a different place yeah. in New Zealand. There are different stories that are probably at some point going to be incorporated into what we do and gives us a wider perspective as a band as well. Um, as we talked before the interview, it's a, it's a super long way to, to go and, and yep. tour anywhere for, for you guys. So have you ever thought about uh, moving somewhere else from, uh, from New Zealand? Uh, I don't think I could live anywhere else, to be honest. Um, I've, yeah, New, New Zealand still holds a special place in my heart. Um, and I, I think I always want to stay in New Zealand, but I mean, there are definitely countries that I've visited that have gone, oh my God, this place is amazing, you know? Yeah, I'd, I'd rather put up with the 30 hour flight and <laughs> paying a bit extra money to still be able to live there, because I, I do, like Lewis was saying, I, I love the place as well. 
and we've got a lot of our family over there. But an extended stay somewhere here in Europe, like, that could be good. You know, maybe a six month little holiday. Uh, you just have to wait when the mosquitoes come in a couple of hours. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, they've already been attacking me. They've been eating me all day. <laughs> they don't really go for me, I've found, so I'm lucky in that one. But, yeah. Yeah, as you guys say, it's, it's starting in a couple of hours. Oh, man. <laughs> and we, we had to take our shirts off to go on stage. We're going to come off like being eaten alive. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to spray you guys up with bug spray. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, a lot has happened uh, in, in your career already. So what has been the biggest highlight so far? Mm. That's a hard I, Honestly, I think there's so many, it's real hard for me to pick favorites. But I think, like, the first time like my mind was blown was when I found out we got booked on Wacken because that was like we literally set ourselves a goal like we want to play Wacken by the time Henry's 20 and we, he was 18 when we got the call and yeah that was pretty like I had to slap myself and like I thought I was dreaming. Think you were still alive. <laughs> yeah. So how was the show like how nervous were you before that? I was, I was pretty nervous but like there was a big crowd there and it was an epic show and they had pyro and fire and yeah it was just like a, a thing we could check, check off the bucket list I guess. So what's next? Uh, what kind of uh, like musical dreams do you still have? Like what's the next goal? Well um, for a little bit it was headlining a festival but now I guess we are in the headline slot here, so um, that's another thing ticked off the bucket list, which is awesome. And then um, I guess headlining, I guess one of the, the major metal festivals would be pretty awesome as well. And then an arena show where we're headlining is like another one that we just want to get done at some point. A third album. Yeah. Two of that, the fourth album, two of that, just keep, <laughs> keep going. Yeah, keep the cycle going. goes just on and stop. on and on. <laughs> just don't stop, I reckon. Uh, how far ahead have you thought about your future? Like, uh, when are you going to think about some new music? I mean, I'm kind of like a, you know, just roll with the punches kind of person. Yeah, same. Um, and I, I work with what's happening right now, and obviously tour planning, I'll I'll do that, but as far as what I've decided is going to happen with the band over the next couple of years, there's nothing set in stone. We're open yeah. to anything. I feel like I have many hopes, but I like to like not have too many expectations because then you know you get disappointed sometimes. Um, but it's 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 been pretty mind-boggling so far. So yeah. I think we're just going to keep doing what we're doing because it seems to be working. <laughs> <laughs> seems to be doing pretty okay. <laughs> hey, thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, good. No worries. And uh, can we take a picture, first of all, to our social media? And yeah. then, of course, uh, I know Kristen pretty well, so uh, I was just texting her, like, well, I'm here at uh, Numerok and announcing Alien Weaponry on stage, like, oh, I miss you. So. Yeah, yeah, cool. Easy. Yeah. Great. It's a, it's a pity she's not coming out to this one.